Center for the Ethiopian Educational Information and Communication Technology presents Educational Satellite Television Programs. Hello students, this is grade 12 chemistry revision from grade 11 course. So this is lesson four. Uh, for today, I will start our discussion from the discovery of neutron. James Chadwick discovered the neutron by the bombardment of beryllium atoms using the alpha particles. So, from his experiment, the mass of neutron is the same mass as proton, but neutrons have no charge, no electrical charge. Discovery of the atomic nucleus. The atomic nucleus was discovered by Ernest Rutherford. Ernest Rutherford carried out a series of experiments using a very thin file of gold and other metals as a target for alpha particles from a radioactive source. So here we have a diagram about how Rutherford discovered the atomic nucleus. Here we have a radioactive source. The radioactive source has alpha rays. These alpha rays have positive charge. And here we have a gold foil and we have a spherical detector. So uh, from this experiment, when the alpha particles bombarded the gold foil, when the alpha particles bombarded the gold foil, most of the alpha particles pass through the gold foil, but a few alpha particles deflect with different angles. So here is the result of Rutherford experiment. Now this is the atom. These are the alpha particles. When we see the atom, the atom made from the electrons and at the center we have the nucleus. We can observe here is that most of the alpha particles can pass through the atom, but a few deflect with some angles. So, Rutherford's gold foil experiment shows that, one, most of the space in the atom is empty. This is important. Most of the space in atom is empty. This explains why the majority of the particles, that means alpha particles, can pass through the gold foil. The second one, the atom has a positive charge because a very few alpha particles are deflected by the center of the atom. So all of which is concentrated in the nucleus. That means the positive charges are concentrated in the nucleus of the atom, which is a dense central core with the atom. The third one is the heavy positively charged core is responsible for the deflection. We know that alpha particles have a positive charge. Why alpha particles deflect with different angles? This is because in the atom, in the center of the atom, there is a positive charge that bounds the alpha particles back with some angles. make up of the nucleus of the atom. So from Rutherford experiment, we know that 
atom has a positively charged nucleus. So this positively charged nucleus is the proton. In general, when you come to the atom, we have three important subatomic particles. The particles are proton, neutron, and electron. The symbol for proton is a positive charge. The symbol for neutron, N, with zero. Zero means neutral. And electrons, E, with a negative charge. When we see the relative mass of these subatomic particles, protons and neutrons have a 1-1. One -one. This is a relative atomic mass. But when you come to electrons, electrons have almost zero mass, or it's about 0 0.000545. So it's about a zero. When you come to the charge on these subatomic particles, proton has a plus charge or a plus one, neutron has no charge, and electron has a minus one charge. Location means location inside the atom. Protons locate inside the nucleus, and also neutrons locate inside the nucleus. But when you come to electrons, electrons are outside of the, the nucleus, that is their location. Now here we have an activity. The first question, calculate the number of proton, neutron, and electron for the following. For example, the first one is iodide. So iodide, its mass number is 127. Its atomic number is 53. So the question is, what is the number of proton? So if you have an element x, always here we have a mass number. And here, the atomic number. So from this information, the atomic number is 53. The mass number is 127. But iodine is in the form of iron, that is iodide. That means it has one more electron. We know that atomic number, atomic Number means number of protons in the nucleus of the atom. So 53 means 53 means the number of proton. The number of proton. So the number of proton will be 53. The next one is the number of neutron. We know that mass number mass number is equal to atomic number plus the number of neutron. So the mass number is 127. Uh, is equal to the atomic number from this information is 53 plus uh, the number of neutron if it is the number of neutron the number of neutron will be 127 minus uh, 53. So it will be 74. So the number of neutron here will be 74. But the number of electron, we know that for neutral atom, the number of proton is equal to the number of proton for neutral atom. But here iodine exists in the form of iodide. That means it gain one more electron. 
So, if the number of electron here is 53, it add one more electron and the number of electron will be 53 plus 1 that is 54. This is fifty four. This is the number of electrons. In the same way, we can calculate uh, for barium and for lead, their proton, neutron, and electron, respectively. The next question Why do isotopes of an element have similar chemical property? chemical properties. We know that the chemical property of an element is depends on its electron. Its electron. But when you come to isotope, isotopes have different number of neutrons, but not different number of electrons. Since isotopes have the same number of electrons, isotopes have similar chemical properties. Atomic mass and isotopes. Atomic mass. Atomic mass means the average mass for an atom in an element. The average mass of for the, el the atoms in element. An, sorry, in an element. The average relative atomic mass, that is A of an element, A, can be calculated in the following way. For example, an element may have different isotopes and different fractions, fractional abundance. So we can calculate the average mass of that element using the following formula. Now A means here the average relative atomic mass. F means fractional abundance. So, A is equal to A1, A1 means the first isotope, times F1, F1 means the fractional abundance of the first isotope, plus A2, A2 means the mass of the second isotope, uh, F2 means the fractional abundance of the second one, plus if you have N isotopes, you will have a N F N. So using this formula, we can calculate the average mass of an element with different isotopes in different ratios. In different ratios means in different fractional abundance. For example, here we have one good example. The element chlorine contains two isotopes. The first one is chlorine 35 with relative mass 34.97 atomic mass unit. The second isotope, that is chlorine 37, which has a mass of 36.97 atomic mass unit. Calculate the percentage of each chlorine isotope. The average atomic mass for chlorine is 35.5. In order to solve this Equation, uh, we develop two equations and using a simultaneous equation we can calculate the average, uh, I mean the calculate the percentage of each chlorine isotopes. Uh, we know that uh, uh, from this information uh, using the formula the element is chlorine, the first one is uh, chlorine has a mass of 34.97, that's A1, times the fractional abundance, means the percentage, let's say x percent or x over 
100 plus the second one is or the second isotope chlorine 37 has a mass of 36.97 atomic mass we need you need uh, with a fractional abundance or percentage let's say y for the second one over 100 is equal to here it says the average atomic mass of chlorine is 35.5 atomic mass units. This is one relation. So we have two variables. We cannot solve two variables using this equation. But we have additional information. We know that the percentage of the two, the sum of the percentage of x and y is 100%. So we can write that x plus y is equal to 100. So we have two equations with two variables. So using simultaneous equation, we can solve the value of x and y. That means the percentage abundance of chlorine 35 and chlorine 37. So, students, please try to solve x and y for yourself. Uh, students, this is the end of lesson four. Thank you for following me. Next time, we'll continue from lesson five. Goodbye. Goodbye.